Hello and welcome. Today, we will be looking at how to decrease time to first byte, also known as TTFB, for a Google Cloud deployed web server. You can find your TTFB using speed vitals and figure out if it should be decreased. Just paste your URL here and then press the button and just wait a second. And here's the data. As you can see, in Europe, we have a pretty high TTFB with an average of 483 milliseconds. It's quicker in America as this web server is based in Oregon. And then going down to Asia, Pacific, and Africa, it's even higher than Europe with some pretty high TTFBs. Here's the map. As you can see, there's barely any green outside the US. And here's the final score. We have a performance score of 62% with an average worldwide of 435 milliseconds. As visible in this diagram, TTFB is HTTP request time, process request time, and HTTP response time. TTFB depends on the network, so it doesn't matter how optimized the app is. For users with low connectivity, high TTFB can have big effects. For example, a web server in the US is used and the user is accessing the server from Colombo, Sri Lanka. The request payload has to go through the internet all the way from Colombo to the US to reach the server. This takes time. As you can see here, I have increased our score by decreasing average TTFB from 435 milliseconds to 172 milliseconds. There are multiple ways to do this. One is through a CDN. However, this only works with static content. For dynamic content, such as APIs, they have no use. In our use case, we'll be using a fast API. Deploying an application in multiple regions is the traditional solution. However, it is expensive and costs a lot of overhead. The solution we will be focusing on is edge locations. These are small data centers of the Google network deployed around the world. They are added to a web server using an HTTP load balancer. It understands the nearest edge location server to you and connects to it. Basically, the data is sent from you to the edge location server, not directly to the web server in the US. The edge location server is connected to the US server, so it's a part of the Google network. So now let's begin the how-to of the setup for this load balancer. We will be using a simple Python fast API, which is deployed onto a virtual machine on the Google Cloud network. This API takes in data about an article and then modifies some of the information and returns it. For example, it returns the first 50 words of the article and capitalizes each word in the article title. It also returns some new information, such as the name of the article author. Basically, we are trying to simulate the behavior of a simple post endpoint. So right now, the API is deployed onto Google Cloud without a load balancer. Let's run some post requests and see the times we get. This first request is one MB of data, as you can see it here. Uh, there's our URL, so let's send the request and take a look at the time data. There's the response, and there's the time data, and there's the transfer start. Uh, it is 882 milliseconds. Um, TTFB is a part of transfer start in Postman. Let's go to 1.5 MB, send the request, and then again look at the data. We get 1,198 milliseconds for transfer start. And then next for 2 MB, Let's send the request again, and then get the response, and here's the transfer start with 1,249 milliseconds. Let's deploy a load balancer, and then come back and see how much these numbers decreased. Before creating a load balancer, we need to create an instance group, as that is what the load balancer points to. We'll find this in the navigation menu under Compute Engine. Here, press Create Instance Group and then make sure to select new unmanaged instance group. First, give it a name. I'm going to call mine Fast API Tech Tutorial Group. For location, make sure to choose the same region as your VM. Ours is in Oregon, and it will be in Zone A. Leave these two settings on default, and then down here in VM instances, choose your VM instance. Mine's called Tech Tutorial Fast API. And once that's selected, that's all you have to do for the instance group. Just press Create, and it's all done. And here you go. The instance group is created. Now we have to create the load balancer. This is under Network Services in the Navigation menu. So I'll just scroll down and find that. Uh, it's right here. Yeah. Network Services Load Balancing. Let's press Create Load Balancer and choose HTTPS load balancing. And then on this next screen, choose down here, global load balancer classic. Now let's give the load balancer a name. 
And then here, let's give the front end a name. And then under protocol, choose HTTPS. And then scroll down past all these. And in under certificate, we had to press create a new certificate. Give the certificate a name now. And then in create mode, choose create Google Managed Certificate. And then paste your domain down here. Make sure to delete the HTTP and the forward slashes. And then here press create, and this could take a second. And then under here, you can scroll past all these, leave these on default. And then just press done, and that will be the front end created. Now under backend configuration, we're going here, we're going to have to create a new backend service. Make sure to service instead of a bucket because a bucket is for static files. Here, let's give it another name. And then down here, keep all these settings on default. And then you're just going to have to scroll down here, past all these, you got to keep these on default. And then down here in backend, under new backend, choose the instance group we just created. And then import numbers. I'm going to use 80, and that was probably most likely what you're going to be using, but you may have set up your VM differently. Okay, so let's change that to 80. And then in balancing mode, uh, we're going to go with utilization, like that. And then the maximum backend utilization, change that to 100%. This is because we only have one backend service. Uh, yeah, keep all these at default, and then press done right up here and then scroll past all these don't need any of all that and then go down to health check here we're gonna have to create a health check so press that uh, create a health check and then we're gonna have to type in another name and then you can keep all these settings at default just uh, go past them to health criteria We'll have to change the check interval to 300 seconds and timeout to 10. This is because uh, it's not too serious, so we don't need that many checks. So change those and then just press save, and that's the health check created. And then we're done here in the back end. Just press create. Press OK. And then next step, we're on to host and path rule. Uh, make sure to press add host and path rule. Press in, paste in your domain name, and again, you're going to have to delete the forward slashes and HTTP. Do that. And then under path to, put forward slash asterisk so that we um, cover all uh, paths. Under backend to, create the backend we just created. And then that is the rules created. And then here in review and finalize, you can just view all your settings. And we could just now press create, so everything looks good. And this will take some time to create the load balancer. So just wait for that to be finished. And there we go, our load balancer is created. Now let's run some tests and see the results. So here's speed vitals again. Let's just paste in our domain and go in. Let's take a look at the new data, see how much the load balancer changed it. And immediately, everything in Europe seems to be green. It's already good. In America, uh, all green, yep. Asia, mostly green, a couple yellows and limes, but much more improved. Performance map, looks much better. And if we go down, there's our performance. 94%, an average of 180 worldwide. That's a great improvement. And here are the postman post requests. Let's send them and take a look at the times. So over here, yep, transfer starts decreased. And the next one, send the request. Again, transfer starts decreased. And the final one, 2 MB. Yep, transfer start has decreased. So there we go, our load balancer has worked. There were quite a few settings that needed to be configured there in Google Cloud, but that really is all. Getting this load balancer up and running will greatly help improve load times for your web server. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you, and thank you for watching.